Listener Production. Table for six. Uh, might be around 20, 25 minutes. Oh, wait, no, a booth has just opened up. Hooray! Right this way for Matt and Alex All Day Breakfast. Oh, very happy Friday to you listening. Thank you so much for tuning in to All Day Breakfast and a very happy Friday to my co-host, Mr. Matt O'Kine. Hello, Matt. Yeah, how's it going? Look, uh, there's some interesting news coming out of Victoria. The National Gallery of Victoria is building a pink pond for visitors to cool off in uh, this summer. I think you can wade through it. It's going to be pink and how, you can just chill out. How are they making it pink? I don't know. It's I'm not sure the, there's engineers for that. It's not the artist's pink and, the, you know, she's they... just bathing in it like a bird bath or something. <laughs> no, no, they're also not going to dump a truck full of musk sticks <laughs> in there, okay? I'm sure that they've got a way that I don't know about. Hey, the other I thing see is... photos of these pink ones. They're all in WA in South Australia. Like, they're driving along and one side there's, like, blue water and one side there's pink water and that sort of thing. Is that what they're doing in Victoria? Like, uh, artificially? Yes, with algae? I, I guess so. Uh, also, in the historic Pemberton, uh, there's a historic Pemberton trout pond site which is getting restored which is exciting uh for anyone in pedmonton with their interested in the trout pond but look what's more important alex dyson is we have another pond on this show this today we certainly do it's these guys That's right, Nick and Jay from Aussie, Indie, Psych, Rockers, Pond are going to be joining us. I've got a brand new song called America's Cup and uh, we're going to be having a chat and see how they go because they're up to their ninth album. It's incredible. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe they can do it. Uh, it is, certainly is incredible. Also, uh, we're going to be delving deep into the depths of the school bag uh, story dropping on the, on the news website this week that uh, brought, brought a little... I don't know, brought some memories back of our own Alex Dyson, so we might as well get stuck into that right now. Why not? It's All Day Breakfast. Let's get this show on the road. Let's go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Matt and Alex, All Day Breakfast. Alex Dyson, I need to apologise <laughs> to my dad, the Daddy Mac. What for? For the well, things you did in high school? <laughs> 19, I mean, I did, I did a lot of, I put him through a lot of stress in high school, mostly for my weekend partying ways, um, you know. Asking him for lifts to various different places. Were you um, a staying getting... at staying at friends' houses and not telling him? You know, we didn't have mobile Whoa. phones back then. It was very difficult to just communicate with your parents and send them a whole "Hey, I'm at you know Mikey's house" or whatever. Yeah, but uh, I do have to apologise because um, you know, for most of year nine, you know, he's a single dad, mind you. Mm. You know, single dad. He's looking after his little delinquent son. <laughs> Sending me off to school with this beautiful lunchbox full of fresh chicken sandwiches oh. and a frozen popper. And he'd give me he five freeze dollars. it overnight so it's nice and cool for you with he'd the hot, brizzy sun the next day. That is foresight. Fr- well, that this is, is what happened. Lo- that is love preparedness. He'd make the chicken sandwich with frozen bread, all right, and then mm. he'd pop it in the, sam- in the, in the lunchbox on top of the frozen popper, and they'd both all thaw together. Mm. Everything would seem good. Except so by about also, that 1 p.m., it's right to go. Exactly. Chicken nice and fresh. Except he would also give me $5 for the tuck shop most days, and which meant, what? let's be whoa, real whoa, here. Whoa, 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 Hang on. Have I been broadcasting with a person who got $5 <laughs> every day going to the tuck shop? You had notes? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's why I drive my Bucati every single uh, day. That's why. That's why the Bentley's parked in your in your in my um car park downstairs. Thank you very much. Because I, I am rolling in it. I had the ham and cheese every day. Similar frozen drink bottle going mm. overnight sort of situation. But man, I was on a I was on fifty cents on a Friday rations. Oh! Like that's what we were going with. Oh, Pongo, that is. <laughs> That you couldn't get a bag of of sour worms for that much. <laughs> well, you no, get the look, five cent carrot look, sticks. I'm not gonna lie, the Daddy Mackie treated me very well, and too well, in fact, because mm. it meant with five dollars, oh, I can make that stretch all day. Which meant chicken sandwich in the bin no. daily. All right, <laughs> now, Dad, I'm sorry. You don't even. You might not even know that I was doing it, oh. but almost daily, your well made lunch was in the bin. I'm. So, I feel so. Bad I remember the teachers specifically, and it was relatively regularly mentioned, 
Don't throw your stuff in the bin. Take it home and tell your parents that you didn't eat it. I know. I could have just bin. done that. He's, a, he's, he's waking up early every morning to provide me with lunch. <laughs> and I'm just binning it most days like an absolute gronk. Okay, so I'm sorry, you're just, Dad. You're just murdering chickens at that point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what um, you're going with. So, look, I'm really so I feel terrible. Anyways... At least I threw it in the bin. Okay, now I say this because a TikToker named Rachel Stetcher um, has revealed recently that her teenage brother, who's now starting the in-school, in-person schooling thing that uh, has not been going on in certain parts of the world since March 13, 2020, um, getting ready for the, his first day back at school in more than a year, Opens up the bag, realizes never took his lunch out of the out of the lunchbox the from last day before lockdown. <laughs> yeah, lunch March still 13, in there. <laughs> twenty twenty. Now they posted photos of it on TikTok, uh, which you can check out on Rachel Rachel Stessia's TikTok, and uh, it's been viewed by more than you know over four million times. <laughs> the color of this banana, mm. and I'm teaching Sophia the color of things right now. You know, you say <laughs> banana yellow. Okay. You know when you told me a little while ago, Alex Dyson, you said, have you ever Googled the blackest black ever? Blackest paint, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. My, I feel like this banana has been painted with the blackest paint in the world. Like I feel like yeah. I get lost in it. It's the sort of banana that you look at and your hair turns grey yeah, immediately. You got your sandwich there as well. It's got all sorts of mould going over it and that is pretty rancid stuff on these images. But it did bring to mind these these school days because I had a friend who, who went to school and apparently a similar situation, lunch, that kind of thing, but he got, he'd get a cheesy mite scroll every day mm. and um, some days he ate it, some days he didn't. But when he didn't, never threw it in the bin. It was just the bottom of the backpack. I think one day, like, one of them got squashed with all these books because the books goes in. Cheesy Mite squashed at the bottom. It was like, oh, that's no good. Anyway, next day, another Cheesy Mite didn't eat that. It got squashed at the bottom of the books. And so... Oh, I can feel a challenge coming so on. then it's like, before you know it, this teenage boy has, like, five or six Cheesy Mite scrolls squashed at the bottom. He's like, oh, that's pretty gross. And my and his books are getting on them. He's like, oh, I need, I need to stop this doesn't take them out because then he'd have to touch them. So he got aluminium foil and placed it on top of the cheesy mites as a as a new bottom to the bag. <laughs> and then their books would go on top of that. So when it, next time you got a cheesy mite, he's like, oh, I'm not going to eat this. Just lift up the flap <laughs> of the alfoil, cheesy mite underneath, pushed it back down. So by the end, his bag was about half capacity because it was a big brick of 20 mouldy, flattened cheesy mites. He a, just had a, new a cheesy mite diamond yeah. by the end of the whole. <laughs> exactly. You be, better be careful. The government will bloody start a coal mine oh, in, his, in oh, his backpack. Exactly. Get the black stuff out. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, but anyways, we thought we'd ask you, what's what, what have you found in your school bag? Let us know at matt.n.alex. What have you found in the depths? <laughs> coffee? Yeah, coffee. A seventh coffee never hurt anyone. Oh, I feel a buzz. Matt, do you ever uh, just realise something that other people think about and you never think about? Do, look, okay, I know what you're going to bring up, and I it's because we were just talking about it off mic, and... I'll tell you something, I thought about this a lot recently and then lo and behold, Reese Nicholson had tweeted the exact same thing. Really? What was that? all about he's officially done with standing up to we. Really? I so rarely stand up to we that I was like, let's just can it all together. Boys, let's just (laughs) Is that a pun? (laughs) (laughs) We need, we need as- Is there a limit of- the things I do in a group, Matt, and For canning anyone... it all together is uh, <laughs> it's not something I'm ready to do just yet. <laughs> okay. I thought we were going to have a decent conversation oh, about a this. a decent conversation about <laughs> sitting on the dunny. Yeah, we've had very few of those in this podcast. Well, do you know very what? many chats about it, very few of them decent. And, you know, Bron, you're here. Can you Can you get on board this, right? Do you know what I'm finding so annoying? I was hanging out with a really good mate of mine. We went away and he's walking around leaving the toilet seat up. I'm like, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> did, you, did, you, 
Did you sit on rim? I didn't fall in, <laughs> but I know what people. I know why there's complaints about it now. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. It is the yeah. worst. Can we just stop it? It, it? You said it off air before, Bron. Toxic masculinity at its <laughs> finest. Standing up to urinate. You just don't need to. Do, you're not proving anything to anyone. Well, I'm I'm a half sitter and stander when it comes to whether I'm at home or I'm out and about. Okay, at home sitting twenty four sevs. I'm not going in and standing. No, okay, I'll unless sit I'm down wearing, unless I'm wearing quite a long jacket. That's the that's what I do <laughs> because then you've got to like hitch it up at the back to sit down. You know what I mean? That's so, nah, that's that's annoying. Or the nah, order Matt and Alex all day robe. If you've got it in that one there, stand. All right, I'll sit down everywhere. Quick wipe of the seat. We all good. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. That's where we got onto where I started from because I said to Bron, like if I'm out and about, <laughs> this also came up because you told a story of you were at a house party on the on the toilet having a sit and someone bust, yeah. busted in. Well, I mean, that's because, and you're like, what? You were sitting on the toilet at a random house party? Yeah, I don't care. I don't, well, it doesn't matter where I'm, like, where I'm at. It's a toilet. I, you know, one wipe over and I'm sitting down. And I said, well, if I'm, if I'm playing an away game, always standing, <laughs> because something that unfortunately goes through my mind is, wow, a lot of bums have touched that. You know, when it comes to an, an external toilet seat in my own home, I know the bums, a select number of bums, and it's bums that I trust. And so <laughs> it's, it's all the bums. You've got the check-in code. <laughs> exactly. You, you've got the- <laughs> I got the PUR code <laughs> at the front door. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> but let's just make sure that this is not a feces free Friday by going to Bron, which there's, you had never even considered the fact that toilet seat had other people's bum on them. Not at a, not at a house. Maybe if you're out like in the world, in like a shopping centre, yes, disgusting. But in your, someone else's house. But of I, course... Trust Girls the sit down every time, though. So why? Mm. Like that's just part of the. That's mm. that that is just part of their life, you know. So why why would anyone else think about it? I don't think about it. I'm like, yeah, probably a squillion butts have touched this, <laughs> and now there's a squillion and one, mate. <laughs> Make way. Honestly, but who can honestly, who can be bothered aiming? Like it is the biggest hassle, and it's such it's such a drain. And when I have to aim, I'm like, Ugh, <laughs> why am I doing this? Is it that hard? <laughs> is it? Oh, it's well, so hard. When I mean, it, it is, goes- it's very hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to text in and give me some support here, okay? There's two types of people: <laughs> smart, efficient, <laughs> weirs. And absolute gronks who feel like they need to prove something to the world by standing up and f- and spraying their bits <laughs> everywhere. I don't know about smart and efficient with the way you explained it of, I can't be bothered aiming. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> also, also, it's more comfortable. It's more comfortable. Comfort. You can check your phone easier. You know, you let it all go. You don't have to. You don't have to lift a seat up or put it down. Anyways, team sit. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even want to. I wanted to say what things haven't you thought about? Oh, like about when you go to a restaurant and like how many people have used the cutlery? Yeah, or something like that. Oh well, what about when you said the other day that about the how many people have been using trying on shirts and I just whack it on as soon as I buy it and don't even oh, wash yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's grubbed me out heaps. Yeah. I think actually one of you guys told me that um, people pee on public barbecues and I never thought about that. Oh, you don't want to be sitting down to pee then. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Order up. Just how you like it. Perfect. All day breakfast. Matt O'Kine, psychedelic mango, corridors of blister day, beard wives denim. 
They're not just random words. They are all Pond albums, and we have loved them over the years, all the way to 2021, where the boys from WA are releasing their ninth studio album, this time called Nine. It's just being announced alongside their new single, America's Cup, which sounds like this. We're so happy to have two of the members of Pond joining us today, Nick and Jay. G'day. Hello. How are you guys? Oh, we're so good. Excited for just the number nine now. Um, that was uh, an interesting decision. Did it take a while? Did they come up with that name? Um, I think it did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound the one that you get to the end. It's like, let's just go solid. Let's go nine. <laughs> right before the uh, the big, you know, double figure celebration, which is great because you must have had fun naming like those names in the past. You must have heaps of fun throwing them out there. Yeah. I'm, it's a real step step back from the, like, psychedelic whimsy front, isn't it? Going back to nine. A little bit, but then you hear the song America's Cup and you go, oh, no, you've still got the psychedelic whimsy coming through. Is it about the America's Cup? I mean, good WA boys yourselves. Um, it was near there where Australia won it for the first time, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, no, it's not really about the America's Cup. <laughs> not about God. Bob Hawke drinking the beer afterwards and telling everyone that any Australian who goes to work afterwards is a bum. Uh, the spirit of it's in there. Yeah, sure. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know about that. Yeah. So if it's not about the America's Cup, then where did the idea of America's Cup come in, get inserted uh, to this song? And what is it about then? I think it, it's just a, it's like a, it indicates a point in time, the America's Cup. Mm. It's like having a song called the 2000 Sydney Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. That would be good. Have you, right. yeah. have you been asked to write an anthem for something like that occasionally? Like I know Eskimo Joe out that way when Fremantle was sort of dabbling as to whether there'd be a new th- a new club song, mm. they got asked to write a song, which they did, didn't get voted in, in the end. But then Harry from the Cat Empire wrote the um, GWS Giants theme song. Have you been asked to do any of those kind of things, Nick? God, no. Not <laughs> no. 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 Think any, anyone would be? No one would be stupid enough to ask Pond to they, do they something. They couldn't trust you guys. I'm sorry, but they just couldn't. You know no. what I mean? Yeah. The Fremantle Dockers would end up with some song called "We Used to Kick Soccer Balls" or something like that. You'd be like, "What? Yeah. What, what, what yeah. is happening here?" Yeah, heroic shark. Um. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, look, uh, I mean, I, from what I understand, the, the song America's Cup is a little bit of an ode to where you guys sort of grew up around the streets of Fremantle. Is that right? Yeah. I guess it's sort of an ode to the people who experienced that, like, pre-America's Cup kind of grit of Fremantle when it was just warehouses and um, mm. pescatores and... Um, fishing boats. Fishing boats and... Um, and yeah, just thinking about how it was, it was it was a wonderland for them back in the day, and um, over time it's been gentrified and changed, and now there's sort of these like lingering wraiths that are, uh, you know, stalking the streets still. Our friend Az, who's um, been in cool. Frio since before the America's Cup, he reckons there's a guy that used to work on the docks, and he stayed like he lived full time at this pub called Moondine Joe's. Um, which is now called the Beaconsfield Hotel, I think. Yeah. And he reckons that this guy never went to the city to Perth in his life. <laughs> Just lived in Frio the never entire time. Never left Fremantle. And he couldn't, drive, he couldn't drive and he'd get a taxi home every day from the port to the Moondon Joe's and he never went the extra 35 minutes up the highway to Perth City. Why would you? <laughs> which is, seems hard to believe, but also I kind of can. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> what was one of your favourite memories from making uh, Nine? What, what, when, when did it all click for you? It took a long. It took us longer than ever. It took us, I don't know, over a year because um, that's still pretty just, fast for most bands as well. Yeah, Jay, I just know. So I was going to say years. That's re- very reasonable. <laughs> I guess so, but like quite a lot of work on it. I think because um, we did it completely ourselves, which we haven't done since the first one, and because um, Kev had mixed, Kevin Parker had mixed the last couple. We knew that if we were going to do it ourselves, if it wasn't at least in the same ballpark of of quality of sound and production, you know, then we were going to cop it. But for us it was important to, like, kind of push ourselves, just have it sound different um, again, you know. 
Nick, the creativity that you come with is so great listening to Pond's songs, but is there a, 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 a topic or an idea that you are yet to be able to craft into music before? Yeah, like I think I think real enormous true love is beyond words. Mm. Often written about but rarely captured. Have you have you attempted many in as- the past? Yeah, but it's just f-ing pointless. The only <laughs> thing I end up saying is this is so big I can't say it, you know. Sure. <laughs> but it's like when I listen to some sort of like, you know when you hear like a good um like a booty tune, you know, like yeah. it's like some like some someone's like, oh, get me in the bed and we're going to work it all yeah. night or whatever. And I'm like, how do you even write, how do you have the confidence yeah, to write yeah, that? Yeah. Like I'm like, <laughs> oh, wouldn't mind. <laughs> you know, I just can't, For sure. I can't who, do that sort of stuff. Who do you think's got the closest? My mind just when you were talking about how hard it is, I just thought to myself, Adele, I feel like Adele's pretty good at it. Mm. Adele. Oh, yeah. my God. Bow, yeah. bow down. Bow Someone down. Someone like you. I'm in my car, but I'm tearing <laughs> up. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's pretty hard. It is pretty hard, isn't it? Mm. I haven't, I've got to say, and my girlfriend will be offended by this, I haven't learned if I've really tried. You've written very romantic yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. feeling songs. There's difference. There's a difference between that and um, and like a, the overwhelming, um, crushing avalanche of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is. I true. think Leonard Cohen's done it really well. I just can't remember the name of the tune. Anyway, there's none of that on nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Fremantle junkies. And, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's about like a a, a check. A marathon runner, Gold Ag- Agnes Martin. Ooh, um, there's a song about Nick's um, uh, plastic slippers my, he wears. Yeah, my slippers, my beat up slippers. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called, called? What can we? What do we need to listen out for when it's that happens? It's called Gold Cup Plastic Soul, spelled S O L E. Yeah, Gold Cup Plastic <laughs> Soul. All right, well, there will be plenty of what good about, ones. Wait, 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 wait. What about these slippers? Why, why, why are you singing you a song about your slippers? No, no, no I got no. Sh- no, no. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking. Like all of these things, they're the starting point to the song that I'm hoping led to something a little bit like more profound. Mm. I did try to write a love song about Danish butter cookies one time called Imported Love, um, which, <laughs> That's pretty good. which you know, you do That's start beautiful. in those areas, but you're right, there are, there are symbolisms in there. <laughs> uh, you, Nick made me think of something then. Like I think the previous couple of albums, the initial topic would be like grand and maybe heavy and then you would put, like, details in, you know, like storytelling details, and mm-hmm. then, then this one, it's, like, the other way around, you know, where, you, where yeah, it, the, you I, the with genesis the of each song was, was more casual. Yeah, it's, like, it, it's about all these little these little pithy things in that I'm, like, interested throughout my day, like, a, you know, biography of, like, Agnes Martin <laughs> or, like, or, or my slippers or, like, fig season <laughs> or something like that. And then, yeah. yeah, hopefully it leads somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see what see what people think. Exactly. Well, look, it is uh, the latest single, America's Cup, is available now. The brand new album, Nine, is going to be coming out Friday the 1st of October. Nick and Jay from Pond, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for releasing brand new music. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Nice Appreciate to catch awesome. up, Thanks, Thanks, Thank guys. you so much. All the best. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. Well, Alex Dyson, it's that time of the week again where we delve into the bottom of the crisp bar. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The bottom of the backpack. <laughs> yeah, and find out what sort of cheesy scrolls have been left under the uh, under the aluminium flap. Uh, and let's kick things off uh, with Nicole.k underscore 81. Got in touch with us on at matt.n.alex. Said, this is in regards to what didn't you back up or what did you lose? Nicole said, one time my friend was at my house doing an assignment for uni on a laptop while we watched trash TV. She got up off the couch to go to the toilet. While gone, my cat, who had always hated this friend of mine, <laughs> sat on her keyboard and she came back to her whole assignment having been deleted the by cat, the cat. Literally, that's <laughs> yes. just got to be the excuse they gave the lecturer for sure. No, she said she was not impressed. Nicole says, I said, don't blame my cat. You should have saved it. So, wow. Goodness All right. Gracious. What's your kitty done? 
All right, um, Ali- uh, Matt.n.alex. Alicia uh, gave us a message regarding our conversation about Ziploc bags this week, saying, why is nobody turning the Ziploc bag inside out after cleaning to help dry it? Also, I feel that couple that we had for Low Court of Australia er- in the- earlier in the week would benefit from reusable Ziploc bags. Actually, they've appeared in our drawers very recently. I oh, didn't, well, you want... <laughs> I didn't purchase, as you can imagine, but that's <laughs> but good, good stuff. On you. Yeah. Now, that's good. Well, look, Heather's got another one. Heather said, in regards to Ziploc bags, my mum would often put Ziploc bags in the washing machine with the tea towels. She would wow. then peg them, peg them up on the washing line outside so you wouldn't have to worry about the wet corners. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's Far pretty good. Mama. Uh, Louise, um, I think Rant Dog uh, resonated with Louise this week, saying, I always struggle to get rid of the fog from my windscreen, like every single time. I think I've gotten it, and then I put it to the test, and it's a disaster. I especially hate it when I have a passenger in the car, and they're looking at me like, WTF is going on while I'm spinning dials and swearing. Mate, get I, a you've se- really... A se- circle, a central circular button, Get say, get rid of the fog. <laughs> That's all you need. Because you, because sometimes it, you need hot air. Sometimes you need cold air. Like I don't, I don't know when and yep. why. Sometimes you just need to wipe, use your windscreen wipers, and it's gone. <laughs> and it's on the outside. <laughs> yeah, it was coming from. This time it's coming from inside the car. <laughs> um, Michaela says I bought Have a Heart ice creams not long ago from Aldi. They still exist. Well, there you go. Good to um, get to the bottom of that. And uh, uh, and Jordan has got in touch after the conversation of it's not what it looks like. Jordan, g'day. G'day. How's it going? Good, thanks, Jordan. So what wasn't what it looked like? So I was going on a date with this girl oh, a couple of years ago. Um, it got a little bit later on in the night and we're driving back to my place and I thought, oh, shoot, I better quickly um, drop into the servo and buy some protection. Oh, so um, the date was going quite well and you both decided that um, you were going to be taking it further. Absolutely. It was about the second or third date at this stage. So I okay. thought, yep, this is, this is going places. We quickly just jumped into the servo up the road and it was about one o'clock in the morning Went up to the counter and it's that awkward. You got. You both went it. in together. Well, she she went and grabbed a drink, so I was like, "Yeah, we went in there and a Gatorade or something." It was going to be a little- <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> always got to put the chewy gum. You've got to put something else. It can't be. <laughs> it doesn't look so awkward, you know. I wonder sure. what the I wonder the boost to the economy of uh, condom shielding products is every single time. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So something like that. Anyway, we went up there and then. You know, I asked for what I needed to give it to me, and straight afterwards, I was like busting to get to the toilet, and so was she. And I was just like, "Oh, can we just quickly go out the back and like borrow the toilet?" And these are like one of those keys with a big hubcap that like hangs to it. <laughs> oh yeah, half a car <laughs> attached can, to it. Sure, yeah. you got to. Oh, here's the key with a traffic cone. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> he just gave me the filthiest look and said, "No, I'm sorry, but you're not using the toilet. There's not nah, like." They're closed after 10 o'clock at night. Thought it, so I was like, <laughs> he thought you were going to treat it like a hotel room. <laughs> he thought that I, I had nowhere else better to go than that. Well, because you bought the condoms first, mate. That's well, like, of course he's going to think that. You've you've got condoms. She's got refreshments. It looks like there's going to be a solid <laughs> session happening out there in that dirty toilet. Well, if, that you know. That dingy servo toilet. <laughs> if, yeah. if you are both sensible enough to be, you know, using protection, as all good people should in that particular instance, you shouldn't be in the absolute... I mean, there have there have been some some dirty things going on in those bathrooms, <laughs> and so I don't think anyone's having that sort of foresight if they're going to be jumping into the you servo what, toilet. If you were in the mood before the bathrooms, <laughs> it's over the second you step in those servo toilets. Oh, my God. I can think of at least two better places, you know, than the servo toilet. <laughs> well, you should. I hope that's a bit of a longer list than that. But we appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it, the call, Jordan. Thank you so much. No worries. Cheers, lads. Have a good one. Thank you, and cheers for listening to All Day Breakfast today and this week. It's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. Sure has. And look, we'll be back on Monday. So get in touch with anything you've heard on the show that sparks a memory, a story, a thought, a suggestion at matt.n.alex. And if we don't get to it at the time, it could be a part of leftovers as we uh, clean up at the end of the week. Um, Thank you again to Nick and Jay from Pond for hanging out with us today. Absolute legends. And we'll catch you with another ep on Monday. See you then. Bye-bye. Listener.